Well, let's take a look at, uh, let, let's form an interpretation of the first sounding, as we mentioned the last time we take a look at this. Uh, remember the data that we're looking at in IX1D, we have uh, AB over 2, or sometimes it's referred to as L over 2, or sometimes, you know, A capital L over 2, or it could be little l. Uh, they all are basically the same. And uh, so we have effectively increasing depth because as we increase the electrode spacing, uh, we're getting current to flow deeper and deeper in the subsurface, so we're seeing um, a large portion of the current is reflecting the resistivity of the of the deeper deeper intervals, and we're also going to use inflection the inflection point method that we discussed previously to estimate the depths. And if you remember, we're taking inflection points, dividing by two in order to get an approximate, uh, taking the AB over 2 distance, dividing by 2, in order to get the approximate uh, depth. It is guesswork, but it gives us a rough view of the number of layers, the depths, their resistivities. And, and uh, I just want you to, you know, the takeaway from this is that there is information in this basic data. You can get in the ballpark just by looking at it and using some simple rules that we're going to play around with. So let's take a look at the data. Again, this is the sounding that we're going to look at. Uh, you have it kind of laid out with the AB over 2 axis horizontal in this uh, display here. Uh, but over here we have the um, AB over 2 axis vertical. And again, this is a logarithmic scale. So 10 meters AB over 2, 100 meters AB over 2. And um, so again, we're, we're going to make an interpretation of, of this sounding. So, uh, Froelich does provide his rough interpretation. We talked about it the last time. This is uh, interpreted as a shallow gravel aquifer. It's seen in the two boreholes on either side of this survey line. Uh, he did not detect in the drill holes. There, was no, uh, there were no deeper gravels that were detected. So we have bedrock down here with a sandy clay on top of it with the high resistivity shallow gravel aquifer, 103 ohm meters. So the inflection point method, uh, if, you, if you recall uh, back a couple videos, we talked about that. We can, we can estimate what the number of layers are. We can estimate what their depths are. So here's an inflection point. Here's an inflection point. We have another inflection point there, there perhaps. And your interpretations, you know, all of our interpretations, you, me, and you know, all of you out there are probably going to come up with different, uh, well, why did you put it there? Why didn't you put it over here? Or this should be back over here. Or, uh, and, and notice that there's also a little bit of noise in the data. This is a bad data point. But probably we go from decreasing to to increasing in about, you know, right about in, in this area. So how many layers are there? Well, uh, one, two, three, four, five, at least six. Could be more. We haven't really interpreted this interval here. What about the depth to the base of the first layer? Well, we take the inflection point depth, 1.4 meters, divide it by two, we get 0.7. Uh, the next layer, about 2.6 meters, uh, divide that by 2, we get 1.3, 8.2 meters, divide that by 2, 4.1. The next inflection point, we're out here, 20, 30, 40, about 38, 38 divided by 2, 19. And the fifth layer, the um, base depth to the base of the fifth layer, 60, approximately 31. And again, we haven't, we're kind of drawing a line and saying, well, the variations that we see here aren't really significant enough for us to put in additional layers. Later on, you might, might consider doing that. But uh, So we have a basic model. 
at this point. And um, the rising and, and falling of the apparent resistivity gives us information about the number of layers. The uh, true enough, it's uh, kind of a rough guess, um, but we've got the number of layers down. What might their resistivities be? Well, we talked about this asymptotic method. But the first layer, because, you know, half the electrode array length, you know, the electrode array, the AB over 2, is 1 meter, so the total array length is only 2 meters. And uh, so we're seeing, you know, with uh, three electrodes or, or four electrodes over that uh, 2 meter interval, we're getting a measure of the resistivity in the very near surface there. So that is approximately 23 ohm meters. Right? So for the second layer we could, now this is pure conjecture because we we have other layers interfering in here so we have a low resistivity layer which is kind of knocking this down. We have no idea where this goes. It could go up here. But the one thing that we do know is that it's increasing. So let's just call it 32 ohm. And we continue on. We're decreasing here. We don't know. It could go down to, this, this is probably a clay. It could go down to, could be a gray clay. It could be a yellow clay. Let's call it 23 ohm meters. We just need to get in the ballpark. Uh, and so on for the remaining layers for row four. Uh, we don't, you know, again, we have a lot of layers in the model. So there's a lot of uh, interfering resistivities to keep us from, remember when we did the two layer problem, uh, we had an interface at about 16 meters, 8 meters, for, we did several different examples, but the total array length had to to get out, um, you know, to at least a kilometer or more before we could accurately estimate what the convergence limit would be on the asymptote. So we just aren't able to do that here with a multi-layer problem. But we do know that this is higher resistivity, so uh, roll that one on, on up, call it 84. Roll this one um, uh, down, and uh, we'll call it 49, and so on, 58. So we have our resistivities, we have our depths, we're ready to put together a starting model, and uh, next time we'll do that, uh, but I just wanted to show you here, this is a IX1D display, this is the data window over here, this is the model window over here, we've talked about this, you know, how to interpret this, this is basically the shallower uh, clays, the, the uh, yellow and uh, uh, gray clays, this is probably just a tiny gravel, uh, the resistivity here could be much higher. Um, this would be the uh, shallow near surface gravel, goes from about 4 meters down to uh, about 20 meters, so maybe not that shallow, and then we're down here at bedrock. The bedrock depth is where it should be, we're consistent with the adjacent drill hole data, and that's, you always need to keep the uh, <clears throat> supplementary data that you have. Use all the data that you have, and particularly use drill hole data because that's pretty hard data. And so we know that the bedrock must be down here around 30, uh, 35. Could be some undulations in the bedrock. Uh, so you do have some leeway in there, but uh, we do know that the bedrock can't be down here at 100 uh, meters. And so we just plugged in the the uh, the uh, uh, resistivities that we came up, 23, 32, 23, 81, 49, 58. We put in the depths that we came up just using the uh, inflection points, dividing by two. And, well, I would say that's not really such a bad guess because we're, we've are we got a fitting error of about 8.3%. Not too bad for uh, for just a rough guess. And I think we could all, you could go back and do it, do this, go through this process. And uh, maybe, you know, on different soundings, you wouldn't get 8.3%. might be 10 or 15, but the idea is you're in the ballpark. You've got the number of layers that you need to portray the variations that you see in your observations. Maybe out here we could use an additional layer. 
that would be something to consider later on, whether we'd want to put additional layers in there. But that's the, um, that's the basic idea of putting together a starting model. It's pretty, it's, it, it, I think it's an important exercise to go through, and I could probably scare you by uh, just telling you that I could come in here and I could put resistivities of 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, and put thicknesses of 1, 1, 1, or depths of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or thicknesses of 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and let the program go, and it would come up with an answer with a very low percent error. But if you do that, and you know, if we have time, we may play around. Uh, what you'll find out is that that answer probably is not going to be consistent with what you know about the local geology. So we'll talk more about this next time. Thank you for joining us. See you then.